Hello and welcome to the GCN Racing News Show. This week on the show, Wout van Aert is back and Jeremy brings you the full cyclocross roundup. Lopez moves to Movistar and there is a new skier in cycling. That's right folks, Wout van Aert was back this weekend over at the X20 Trophy in Kortrijk and World Cup Open in Tabor after finishing a road season which saw him take six wins on the road, race just over 5,900 kilometers and of course win Milan San Remo as well as solidify himself as potentially the most valuable teammate to Primoz Roglic at the Tour, whilst taking a few wins for himself of course. The Belgian was still in fine form over the weekend, taking two podium finishes no less. Van Aert has been racking up the miles over in sunny Spain as of late, basing himself out of Girona, whereas Matthew van der Poel, his main rival this season, both on the road and on the muddy cyclocross tracks, has been as far afield as Dubai in his preparation for the cross season this year. Either way, we are waiting to see the two super talents clash once more this winter, and it's looking like that rivalry will resume on the 23rd of December at the X20 Trophy in Herentals. They'll be ducking and diving one another until then, which almost builds the suspense, doesn't it? Anyway, to see what you all think, I got a poll going on the GCN app asking who you thought would come out on top this cross season, Wout van Aert or Mathieu van der Poel. And by 58% of the vote, you guys went for van der Poel. Interesting. Van Aert coming in with 42% of the vote. You're of course still welcome to vote in that poll which is still available on the GCN app if you want to skip tip the scales back in Van Aert's favour. Of course, Jeremy will be rounding up all the latest cyclocross news and results from the weekend later in the show, so stay tuned for that. We'll go back to the road now though and the big transfer news of the week has been that Mikel Angel Lopez has left Astana for Movistar. After six years at Astana, the 26-year-old Colombian will bring a huge boost to the Spanish squad's World Tour prospects. With overall wins at the Tour de Suisse, Catalunya and Colombia Tour, as well as podium finishes at the Giro, Vuelta and a recent top 10 at the Tour de France. Lopez is still surprisingly young really to have such an accomplished result sheet. Hailing from the Boyacá region of Central Eastern Colombia, which is located in the Andes, Lopez also consistently features at the top of the list of riders born at the highest altitude. This year, he was second on that list at the Tour de France, just behind Richard Carapaz, who was born at 2,980 metres. Lopez himself was born at 2,858 metres. No wonder he goes uphill fast, I'd probably struggle to walk up the stairs at that elevation, let alone ride a bike. Personally though, I think this could be a brilliant move for Lopez and the Colombian was quoted as saying he was so happy to be part of one of the most important teams in the world of cycling. Let's not forget that he was also quoted as saying, Movistar is unrespectful, it's typical of them to take these advantage. They also play stupid, these idiots, we know how they race. It's Angry to see the team of the world champion racing like this. What a world champion we have. That was at the 2019 Vuelta when Movistar upped the pace after a number of favourites crashed on a descent. Lopez later apologised for his comments, but still, it could be a little awkward, couldn't it? Arriving at Movistar's first training camp this winter. But then again, pro cycling does tend to have a short memory and I'm sure everyone forgot about that little disagreement a long time ago. Either way, Movistar had a slightly below par season by their own standards. Their best place finish at a Grand Tour was fifth with Enig Mass at the Tour and Vuelta. Valverde, normally the team's most prolific winner, really had quite an anonymous season, to be honest, and didn't win a single race this year. That's the first time that has happened since he resumed racing in 2012 after serving a doping ban. Are we finally seeing the demise of Valverde? Let us know in the comments. Does the veteran Spaniard have any big wins left in him? I'm going to say yes. Can't count him out just yet, I don't think, but I'm interested to hear all your own thoughts. Moving from Spain to Italy now, however, and Filippo Ganna gave us another brilliant quote this past week too, after finally testing negative for COVID-19. The world time trial champion said he felt like a Ferrari stuck in Milan traffic during his period with the illness. A comparison that I cannot relate to in any way. We are of course very happy to hear of Garner's recovery from the virus and I can imagine how frustrating it must have been to miss out on his last goals of the season 
Yet at the same time, the Italian, well, he can't be disappointed with his year, can he? World TT champion, four stages at the Giro, Italian TT champion, and a stage at Torino. And staying in Italy, Gianni Savio, a team manager famous for spotting and developing talent such as Egan Bernal, has a new bet. Signed to his team, Androni Giacottoli, as quoted from the team's press release, that quote actually. Savio has signed Matti Vigo Dell'Arco to his Italian pro team for 2021. The Spanish rider only took up cycling this year and has made the move over from cross-country skiing. He represented Spain at the 2018 Winter Games and took up cycling after his partner did the same. He has quickly made a name for himself on the domestic scene in Spain, winning the regional championships in the Aragon region in northern Spain and was scouted by Italian talent spotter and agent Paolo Alberati. Now, it seems that Vigo del Arco's impressive lab test results is what has earned him that contract and the interest from Savio rather than his race Palmares. And at only 22 years old, the Spaniard definitely has plenty of years ahead of him to make that transition into a potential World Tour winner. Will we see him make the same jump as Bernal? It's going to be interesting to see, isn't it? Either way, a new name to look out for and follow in 2021 for us cycling fans. On to some really good news now and Fabio Jakobsen has finally made it back out on his bike again. The Dutch sprinter suffered severe facial injuries from that horror crash in the Tour de Pallon back at the start of August and had made it his goal to get riding again before December. He has completed that aim which is absolutely brilliant to see although he still faces a lengthy road back to the pro peloton. Fabio has stated that he will return to light training throughout the winter before undergoing further surgery this January. Certainly looks like the Dutchman is not going to give up without a fight from that terrible crash and we really wish him all the best in his comeback. On to more injury news now unfortunately and French climbing specialist Michael Charel who rides for Eje Duzer crashed during the week after colliding with a dog and has sustained a broken collarbone, a collapsed lung and two broken ribs. It appears that the dog escaped from its owner and ran straight into a 34 year old's path. An unfortunate accident, although it was made worse by the fact that the owner of the dog actually fled the scene while Sherelle was injured on the ground. In a statement on his personal Instagram account, the French rider thanked passers-by and the emergency services who helped him but lamented the cowardice of the dog owner. Get well soon, Mikhail. The CCC Live women's team will continue as Live Racing in 2021 and the World Tour squad completed its roster of riders during the week adding Canadian Alison Jackson. The 31 year old has won a stage of the Tour of Scotland and also featured in Team 2016 squad that won the team time trial at the Amgen Tour of California in 2016. The management of Live Racing will change in 2021 with ex-men's pro Lars Boom coming in as director, replacing Jerome Blavens who has held the position for nine years now. The squad will be looking to move on from Marion Voss's departure with Lotta Kopecky to rely on in the sprints. Of course, it's going to be hard to replace the dual Belgium champion, but Kopecky had a solid record in the classics this season, finishing in the top five of all eight races she started in Belgium, plus winning a stage at the Giro. Voss, of course, is moving to Jumbo Visma next season. Moving away from the road now and over to Jeremy, who's going to give you the latest news and roundup from the world of cyclocross. Thanks, Connor. This week in the world of cyclocross, we had two big races go down. The continuation of the X2O Bed Commerce Trophy, formerly known as the DVV Trophy, and the World Cup kicked off its first round in Tabor, Czech Republic. So let's get things kicked off with Saturday's event, which was the Urban Cross in Kortrijk, Belgium. It was the second round of the series, and the course was designed by, yes, three-time world champion Erwin Vrvecke. So in the women's race, it was a new name, though, at the front for many cyclocross fans. 18-year-old Fem Van Empel, the Dutch racer who rides for the Powell Salzen Bingle team, led the race out from the start. In the course, an absolute scorcher. It was super fast, had tons of off cambers, lots of curbs, and of course, you guessed it, was in an urban setting in downtown Kortrijk. 
Series leader Anna Marie Verst had several setbacks throughout the race, taking her in and out of the lead group all throughout the day. The front group, though, consisted of the normal hitters on the women's cyclocross scene, plus Van Empel. It was worst of the triple seven women's squad, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado of Alpes and Fenix, Denise Betsma of Palisals and Bingo, Yara Kasseline of Crayf and Fridsats, and of course, Lucinda Brand of Telenet Balawas Alliance. Now, as the race laps went down, the lead was constantly changing. But in the last lap, a bobble in the off camber section just before they got about halfway through the lap from the world champion Alvarado, she went cascading down into the fencing, which took Lucinda Braun and Castellan off the front group. However, both riders would make it back going into the last sections of the race. Worst had to pull the pin. She was cooked, but it made it three riders, Castellan, Brand, and Betsima that would sprint it all the way to the finish line on the uphill road drag to the line. Brand would go on to double up, taking the win for the second year in a row at the Urban Cross and Court Track. Denise Betsima would come in second place, and Yara Castellan would finish it out in third. Now the overall in the X2O Bed Commerce Trophy is led now by Yara Castellan in first place. Lucinda Brand is at eight seconds, and Anna Marie Verst is at 32 seconds. On the men's side, the big talk of the town was the return of Wout Van Aert. Off the start grid though, it was Tice Aerts of Telenet Balawasa who would lead the group off the start and into the first lap. With several lead changes all throughout those early laps, the first major attack of the day came from Powell Sals and Bingo rider, Michael Van Tornho, who was riding away with the race until a flat tire derailed his day. And at that point, Van Aert of Jumbo Visma, Ely Easterbit of Powell Sals and Bingo, Corny Van Kessel of Tormund CX, and Lars Vanderhaar of Telenet Balawasa would make up the front group. When Michael Van Tornhout flatted, it was that moment that Van Aert sensed that the lull in the pace was fishy and he started to drive the group super fast. The pace went up considerably with Van Aert on the front. Easterbit and Lars Vanderhaar would be able to match Wout Van Aert's efforts leading into the final laps though. Easterbit put down a real display of talent and power to get himself away from the group. Easterbit, the European champion, went on to win the day in Kortrijk. Lars Vanderhaar came in second and Van Aert was able to finish up in third in his first cyclocross race. Now the overall currently is led by Easterbit. A minute 20 back is Lars Vanderhaar and behind him is Tone Aerts at two minutes and 33 seconds. Now on Sunday, we were in Tabor, Czech Republic for the first round of the Cyclocross World Cup Series. Now Tabor has become a classic on the World Cup circuit over the last several decades. So uh, you know a lot of riders were taking this date very seriously. And it was the opening World Cup round. On the women's side, unfortunately off the start, there was a big crash, including junior women's world champion, Sharon Van Andre of Telenet Balawas Alliance, who sustained a huge gash to her forearm, a broken bone, and unfortunately is gonna have to undergo surgery immediately to repair everything that's happened. So here, everyone at GCN, Sharon, is wishing a quick recovery. And it was, it was honestly such a bummer to see that happen. But the racing did go on and it was a really demanding course with a ton of power output to be able to keep momentum on there. A group of four riders would separate themselves at the halfway point of the race. Hungarian national champion Kata Blanca Vos of Proximus Alpha Motor Holmes Dolcini team, Denise Betsima, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, and Lucinda Brandt would make up that group. It would be Brand though, that would go on to show the world how strong she was with the power and technique out on the track in Tabor from about that 30 minute mark. Alvarado would do everything she could to keep pressure on Brand throughout the race, but Brand would go on to take the win. Alvarado had to settle for second and Denise Betsima would round out the podium in third place, but it was a sprint finish with the 19 year old Cata Blanca Vaz who would ride to a career best fourth place and take the win in the under 23 women's classification. In the men's race, we saw the return of Wout Van Aert and last year's silver medalist at the World Championships, Tom Pidcock of Trinity Racing. Now, while Pidcock didn't feature in the front group, he did have a good race. Wout Van Aert, though, did feature in the front group. He led the chase behind a very dominant Michael Van Torenhout. Now, Van Torenhout, possibly angry, making up for the day before's fiasco where he had a flat tire at the Urban Cross where he was leading with a big margin, laid down a monster attack after the second lap to open up a huge huge gap through the barrier section and the subsequent climbs that came after it at the top part of the track. Now, after the gap was established with Michael, teammate Ely Easterbit would try to make the effort to go across and leave Tone Ertz and Wout Van Aert to fight for third place. When Easterbit finally connected with Michael Van Tornhout, the damage, unfortunately, was already done. Easterbit had burned his matches and Michael Van Tornhout in the last lap would lay down another massive attack to take his first elite World Cup victory of his career. 
Second place did go to Easterbit and Van Ayrt was able to turn himself inside out to be able to claim third place. I have to believe that Van Ayrt is gonna be really happy with his first weekend of cyclocross racing, hitting the podium twice. Now, in other events, uh, the UK's own friend of the channel, Zoe Backstead, would win the first ever Junior Women's World Cup event. Woo woo, good job, Zoe. And that's everything I've got from this weekend's cyclocross action. It was an exciting one with Van Ayrt coming back in, Pidcock, the women's racing, all the excitement. If you haven't yet joined us over on the GCN Race Pass, please do. This coming Saturday, we're having the fifth round of the Super Prestige live and on demand. Hope to see you all there. Thanks for that, Jeremy. Now, to finish up the show, a quick run through all the main transfer news from the past week. Starting off with Enrico Gasparotto, who announced his retirement from the sport after a 16-year career, which included two wins at Amstel Gold and a podium finish at Liège. At the age of 38, Gasparotto said on the news of his retirement that he has always lived cycling in an all-encompassing way with great passion and dedication and he thinks the right time has come to say goodbye and dedicate more time to his family and crew. He also thanked all the teams he was part of during his career, saying it was an honor to fight in their colors. Gasparotto also becomes the 14th rider from NTT Pro Cycling to leave at the end of the season. Another rider to retire is Stein Vandenberg. The experienced Belgian rider was a key teammate of Tom Boonen at the Cobble Classics and had a number of top five finishes himself at races such as Umloop Het Newsblad and Ron van Vlanderen. He was a pro since 2005 as it happens and was the tallest pro for a while too until uh, I came along for a little while anyway. Arthur Vichot, ex-French national champion, also announced his retirement after an 11-year career. Good luck in all your retirements, Enrico Stein and Arthur. Alpes and Phoenix have signed under-23 Austrian TT champion Tobias Bayer, the 21-year-old moving over to support Van der Poel, which seemingly everyone does at uh, Alpes and Phoenix. Quebec Assos have started announcing new signings, adding Lukas Wisniewski, Sean Bennett and Karol Vacek. 20-year-old Vacek hails from Prague but moved to Italy at just 15 to pursue his cycling ambitions. Another young rider hotly tipped to make waves in the sport. Simon Clark, Killian Frankini and Dimitri Kleist were also announced as new signings last week. Nick Delamini and Carlos Barbero have both been re-signed by the squad. Quebec Assos' roster is beginning to take shape. Rally Cycling has added a trio of new riders to its women's team for the 2021 campaign. Madeleine Bami, Olivia Ray and Holly Breck. EF Pro Cycling have signed Will Barter for 2021, the American claiming an impressive second place on stage 13 of the Volta España TT last month. Movistar Team Women announced on Monday that Elena Eric, Paolo Patino and Catherine Erod and Gloria Rodriguez have signed extensions until the end of the 2023 season. The team is looking to build on Annemiek van Vluten's addition to the squad over the next two years. Fabio Roux's future is still up in the air. The latest rumour puts him at either Quebec Assos or Vini Zabel KTM. And lastly, there is a new Danish continental team in the racing ranks next year. Restaurant Suri Karl Ras, which has the aim of developing young talent and is owned, amongst others, by Brian Holm and ex-world champion Mads Pedersen. And that is all we have time for this week, folks. But just to let you know, good news, we have the four upcoming World Cup events over on the GCN app with Race Pass. So stay tuned for those. We have Sunday the 20th of December in Namur, Sunday the 27th of December in Dendermonde, Sunday the 3rd of January in Holst, and Sunday the 24th of January in Overijsa. Right, thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.